So I've listed these functions along the first row, sum, average, standard deviation, log, and natural log, and I'm going to illustrate how I use these. So sum simply sums a series of numbers. Okay. Equals, sum, and it's giving me a list of functions. Come on, Excel, you can be a little quicker than that. Parenthesis. And once I put in a valid function, it, it gives me a little help to tell me what to do. I highlight the numbers that I want to, to sum, and I hit return. Okay, so the sum in this case is 9.7. Well, let's say I want to calculate the mean, or the average. That function is equals average. And again, I'm going to highlight the numbers and hit return. Now what you might not have noticed is that I didn't need to put the closing parenthesis on the function. So this was average D7 to D9, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. Excel in most functions figures out that you're writing the function and will add that extra parenthesis for you. And that's a lot of significant figures in this number. So I can um, correct that by using these uh, sig fig uh, tabs and I can reduce that to something that's a little reasonable. Standard deviation calculates the sample standard deviation, and that's equal to, and if I don't know what that function is, I can click here on the functions tab, and it will actually allow me to uh, list different functions. STD, um, EV is the standard deviation. All right, so let's see the standard deviation in that in that those these numbers is 1.1. Again, I can clean things up a little bit. And another very useful function is logs. Now, log is the base 10 log. So if I do equal log log of this number, again, I'm just going to hit return. Notice there's no parenthesis there. It'll still do it. 3.47. And the anti-log is equal 10 raised, and that's the caret symbol, to 3.417, and that should be 3,000, okay? So the log of 3,000 is 3.4. Remember, the log is simply the exponent um, for this number, so that's the same thing as 10 to the 3.47, and of course, this equation is 10 to the 3.47. We could do the same thing with the natural log, and the function for natural log is ln. And the anti-log of a natural log is exponent exp. And, okay, so the natural log of 3000 is 8.006, and the anti-log or exponent of that is 3000. No surprise there. Modulus is another one that I use a lot um, when I'm trying to calculate the remainder. Um, often I would use this if I, if I have a, a date and I want to know um, what fraction of a day is, is left over. So let's say I've been uh, sampling for seven days. Um, and I want to know uh, um, uh, 7 mod 2. Uh, the modulus is going to give me the remainder. So this is going to be equal to mod, select it, 7, comma, 2, and 7 divided by 2 is 3 and uh, a half, or 3 with a remainder of 1. And so the modulus of 7 mod 2 is 1. If we make this 8, the <coughs> 8 divided by 2 has no remainder. If we made this 7.5, um, this number is 1.5. Okay, so that's useful in doing lots of, of date or time-driven functions. And pi is nothing more than pi. It just simply gives you the trigonometric value of 3.1415. Okay. If. If is a Boolean test. If something is true, then put a value in the cell. And if it's false, put something else. So... True and false in Excel is typically indicated by a, a 0 or a 1. Um, and so I'll put in a 1 to indicate a true. Um, I'm going to put in a, a value here. If it's true, uh, display 10. And if it's false, display 
20, and then I can do equals if, close parenthesis, open parenthesis rather, logical test is the one, comma, true value is the 10, comma, false value is the 20. So the syntax for if is if F15 is true, uh, then report F16, else report F17. So here we go. So since uh, it is true, since uh, <clears throat> this value is 1, it's reporting the 10. But let's make this value a 0, and now it reports a 20. So this is very useful in a whole range of, of comparisons. And the last uh, example I want to give you is lookup. I'm going to drag over some data for that. And lookup looks up values in a list. It's very good at assigning things like grades. So let's say um, a student um, has a grade of, of 92. And I want to know what the grade for that student should be. I can use the lookup function. I do equals lookup. Better if I spell it correctly. Lookup value is the 92. Comma. Lookup vector in this case is going to be the series of grades. Comma. And the lookup array is the uh, grade that I would like to assign. And I hit return. So a 92 uh, is between. That poor student is getting robbed. Um, so I have made an error. Let's try this again. Um, data sort. Sort by column I, uh, smallest to largest, and hit OK. Ah, that's much better. Uh, 92 should be an A, and I had done an error in my, my lookup function was correct, but what I failed to recognize is that my lookup data needs to be sorted from um, the lowest number to the highest number, and that's just because that's the way Excel expects it. So. They wrote the function, they get to set the rules. Lookup works fine as long as you sort the data from lowest to highest. So let's see, let's change that 92 to an 81. 81 should, reduce, should be between 80 and 85, so it should return a value of B+. Plus. And sure enough, it does. So those are some handy dandy Excel functions, some average standard deviation log, natural log, modulus, pi, if, and lookup. And if you want more, just type the equal sign and go to the functions menu, and it will then list all the functions that are available, and you can search through them um, to learn what they'll do and the syntax necessary to have them operate correctly.